good morning. I want to start by expressing my deep disappointment that I'm not with you in person today. Just a few days ago, we finalized the acquisition of REM Steel and Mining Business in Australia. REM was Australia's prominent integrated mining, steel, recycling and distribution business. It went into administration about a year and a half ago and we were successful on the 31st of August this year in finalizing the acquisition of this group. Today, I'm at our wire rod mill in Newcastle, one of the industrial heartlands of Australia, one of 150 locations where we now have operations across the country employing some 6,000 people. Given the enormity of the task and the importance of it, I made a decision that I should personally review this business for a period of 100 days and to finalize the transformation plan, setting a course for this business to have a sustainable and competitive future. As a result, I'm here in Australia and unfortunately not with you today. This conference celebrates innovation, it celebrates the sharing of knowledge, and for me personally, it also celebrates opportunity. And it's being held in a place which is very sacred to me, somewhere where I called home for three years. It was in the halls of Trinity College that I first founded Liberty in 1992. Over the last 25 years, my experience of Cambridge has always been an inspiration and always a leading light, guiding me in whatever I do. Before I hand over to my colleague, Dr. Douglas Dawson, I want to share with you why I see so much opportunity in industry and the role metals will play within it. Over the last few decades, I have watched with great frustration the decline in industry in Britain and, and many other developed countries around the world. Our heritage and foundations in industry have been in decline, while our use of the outputs from industry have been ever increasing. My vision is to be part of an industrial renaissance. I believe around the world we have the infrastructure, the people and the demand to have a successful and thriving industrial sector. I hear only too often people say around the world that it is no longer possible to make these products competitively in developed countries such as this. I simply do not agree. What I see is the people, the skills and the knowledge which make this absolutely the right place to do business and to rebuild these industries. Many see this as a grand utopian vision, but I point them to our track record and how we are making our vision a reality and bringing it to life. I believe metals such as steel and aluminium are the foundations of an industrial economy. On these foundations are built all the engineering and downstream businesses which come together to form an ecosystem which sustains an economy. For this vision to become a reality, we need a sustainable business model that requires domestic raw materials, a steady demand, and an environment that encourages and supports investment and development of skills and innovation. Britain's natural resources, which fed our steel plants, have long but depleted. But we have a new sustained raw material. We have an abundant supply of steel scrap. Today, we generate some 10 million tons of scrap per annum which is set to rise to 20 million tons over the next two decades. This mountain of steel scrap, which has accumulated over the many decades in our nation, has to all be recycled. That is an opportunity which we cannot miss. Our green steel vision is quite simply about collecting and processing steel scrap generated domestically, melting it and refining it using our own renewable energy and feeding it to our own downstream engineering plants making products which are valued and in demand for our own consumption domestically. Before I hand over to Douglas, who will explain in a bit more detail how we are making our vision a reality, I want to take this opportunity to express a heartfelt thank you to Professor Julian Oldwood. Julian's understanding and passionate support of our Green Seal model has been both an inspiration and has provided a great deal of encouragement to all of us. Furthermore, his revolutionary ideas about more efficient utilization of materials is truly inspirational and will become another dimension to the sustainability of our industry. With this, I would like to hand over to Douglas. Thank you all very much.